Alrighty guys, we're back. Alright, so where are we up to? We are up to painting in boats. So you need Bianco or just white. Cream will do. Okay. So again, I am not painting, I am just using the side of the brush. And I am running that over the side of the boat, and the paintbrush is doing the work for me. So I don't actually have to do it. As you can see, just the side. Uh, running the brush along the side. So I'm not painting down on, on the miniature, I am sliding the brush along the side of the, the little boats. How you attack it matters. There we go, easy as that. So there's boats in all sorts of weird and wonderful places. On all of our ships, there are boats in all the weird and wonderful places. Again, try and avoid bringing the point of the brush down on the boat because you will then paint over the gap. We want that those gaps in the boats they're already painted underneath and we don't want to paint over that because that means we'll have to come back and repaint it in which is wasting time I guess all I'm doing is being careful and accurate more than Painting, I guess. It's just a. There we go. So, wetting the brush, going on to my plastic bag palette. Coming back to a place where the camera can see. And I am just sliding the brush across the top of the boat. So it's paint on the brush, we're not dry brushing anymore. So what do I use Vallejo? Because I can paint Vallejo yellow directly onto black and white onto dark grey. And it stays there because it's a good quality paint. Uh, there we go. So this is the last boat. Once I finish painting this one in. And as I said to you before, there are places on the ships that you're going to... In order to reach them, you're going to paint over stuff. There's nothing you can do about that. Sometimes that's the boats, and sometimes you're going to have to come back and pick... Either some detail off the ship and repaint that, or repaint the boat. Because you've painted over the boat to get to other stuff. So this is just the nature of the beast. The, the It's all about when you make your attack on what. And there we have it. Them's there's the boats. And I didn't even have to, to come back and touch up anything else. We'll do that again. This time I'll change over to those Ottoman protected cruisers. That we were talking about earlier. Ta da! Alright. So, this is a smaller ship, and that's the reason why I wanted to use this in, as an example. Oh, for a camera that did not blur. Okay, so. Again, we can see the. the I'm not even remotely painting downwards, this is all side of the brush. Uh, around to here, 
and if I did get some of uh, this white paint on the miniature then I just have to mix a grey that is the same colour and come back and pick up where I painted over the less you do that the better so going back the uh, other side should dry by now so I can now do a top coat over that just more paint because as I say I do tend to put a bit of water into the paint sometimes it just helps get more of the color on sometimes it runs into the spaces I like it to run into it's also the nature of the atmosphere here is very dry so there you go more boats boaty boaty boat boat boats easy as that and it is the side of your brush not the point of your brush you run the side of your brush along the boat that's all you do and you end up with those lovely holes in the middle of it uh, so you're not painting over the detail Great stuff. Alright, um, so now we're going to change to black paint and then we'll paint in the bits that are black. And I'll come back and do Big Mac's uh, guns. Alright, so we're back with Vallejo Black. It's just good quality black. Enough said. So oh, this tradition goes back to the Napoleonic era of blacking in your masts. They did this because the, um, they got soot on them. And so that wasn't ship shape. It was better just to paint the black and say we did that on purpose rather than have the funnels do it for them. Alrighty, so there's a bit, and then we're going to do the top of the funnel as well. And this is just side brushing. Done, and then I'm going to turn it on its side and catch this lip. So the uh, colours that you could paint the, your second funnel, not the first funnel, the second funnel for German ships can be uh, sky blue which appears yellow under fog conditions white and dark red, all of these colours the other one is sort of a fluorescent green um, all of those colours work under fog, fog conditions which is the reason why they did it and under battle conditions. They are all historically accurate, but um, yeah, there we go. Funnels are in. Just give me a tick. Yeah, so we don't know what colour the, they painted them on any particular campaign apart from Jutland, because we knew that, know that the, they were painted. The funnels were painted red under Jutland. Uh, Jutland. Um, there we go, so they, that's the black tin mast. And funnel tops. Um, I'll probably do the form mast as well. this time on camera so there are an awful lot of searchlights up there um, if you want to silver those in you can I am actually painting these with the front of the brush But side brushing where I can because if you side brush 
and you're clear of other structures then you're not actually going to cause any damage hopefully to anything else that you're going to have to come back and pick up this is pretty finicky I have seen the searchlights done in silver does look cool but that's not part of my preferred method and you can only do it for ships capital ships this size anyway alrighty where are we done might paint in between as well So that's what I've got. We've got the masts blacked in, we've got the top of the funnels blacked in, we've got the boats in there. Um, so on the other um, one of these that you saw for the Kickstarter, I did the nose in grey, the bow in grey from that forward structure here. I've made that all grey. That is up to you. It's not a practice that they did in, in early in the war. It might have been something they adopted later on. It's certainly a feature of um, uh, World War II ships, and they must have gotten it from somewhere. Um, yeah. But that is up to you. Oop. Let's see if I can hold on to it. That'd be good. All right, so next, peoples. We are putting the guns on it. Uh, and then after that we'll then put some wash in it and then we'll attach it to a base, yeah? Um, sorry, did I say wash? I meant uh, varnish. Put some varnish on it. I just was just noticing that there's a couple of uh, things I have missed. Hang on. So I am now mixing black and grey using the white and black I've got. Alright, so I have missed a couple of these deck things, hatch covers, cupboards, whatever they turn out to be. And I painted over them when I came back to do a deck color. Ah, one camera, idiot. So I'm just adding a, a little scoop of um, lighter paint back onto these. Uh, so I'm edge highlighting. Because I've taken some of this paint off. There we go. They're all back in now. Much better. Alright, I'll be back. Oh, hang on. Now, oh, that was the uh, Mighty Mac. Let's go for a smaller example of some stuff to pick up on um, these protected cruisers. So those are destroyer sized because <laughs> they're just small. And I'm going to sit down. So again, it's the funnel tops, and I am side brushing. Seems I've got way too much water in this paint. Back 
on camera. Side brushing. Just swabbing it around on the top of the funnel. Trying to keep all the bristles together. There we go. And I'm going to black these masks in as well. Yep, you can see that okay. That's good. Same thing again. Just watching where the bristles of the brush go. Then I'll come back and pick up these little bits that I missed. How far down the mast you go in black is pretty much up to you. But uh, they should be blacked um, above the funnel line. Because that's where the smog and smoke and soot sits they can be blacked all the way down to the deck but it's up to the individual captain usually depending on where the ship was uh, assigned to as well if it was Mediterranean or North Atlantic. It would depend on what the standing orders were for those sorts of things. Alright. There we go. It's pretty good detail. I haven't put the wash on this one yet. So once again, on the top, side brushing. Swabbing the bristles around, trying to keep them all together so they don't grab something you don't want them grabbing. I'm going to keep with um, above. the um, crow's nests on both of these rather than all the way down because I'd like uh, them to be the same because they do serve in the same area Back at the mast. Da -da -da -da. Yep. And as I say, I've got three on the run at the same time. I've got the Mac, and I've got these two protected cruises because uh, I've, I'll achieve more for you know a little bit extra effort. One big ship, a couple of small ones. All right, so. That's it for the main body of the ship. So the the Mighty Mac is done. I could, if I want to be finicky about it, some of the wash is in places that I would prefer it not be. So I do have some deck sand colour here. And I might fix up a, a line or two. Um, that is up to you. 
this is, the Mighty Mac is a big ship. A lot of the time, that's not actually going to be an issue on your other ships. I don't want to take away too much of what I've put down here, but you know, it doesn't hurt to fix it up. And this is going to be a prize at a tournament, so I don't want to look sloppy. That's a bit better. Alright, happy with that. Okay, so I'll be back and we'll do some dry brushing on some turrets. Um, and uh, we'll talk about the techniques and what the individual bits are that I'm painting on the turrets themselves. We'll then glue the turrets down. I'm going to make this a bit more fun than the last one and, and uh, glue the turrets in a position that they're firing a broadside. Alright, see you for the next one.